a 14 2 by 6 by 10 foot. Uh, the plan for this weekend is get the top plate installed, finish the OSB all the way up, uh, get it ready to basically close it in. Uh, once I have all that done and I have the OSB all the way up, then I can start working on the roof. I'm going to work on the roof first and then I'll do the, uh, the loft after I get everything dried in and closed in because we're just getting to the point now where I need to get it done. And amazingly enough, on Friday, when I worked all day today, it's a beautiful, gorgeous afternoon. <laughs> when I when I picked this lumber up in Kenai today, it was crazy. Uh, just sprinkling a little bit, and then I swung back by Soldatna. I was meeting up with a viewer. Um, actually, I was actually stopping off to see if Ward was around, and then I got a text from a viewer who happens to be up here, Art. Uh, and he's, you'll probably see him uh, later on in the video. If he swings by, I'm definitely going to get him in the video. Um, and he brought me up some cane syrup. Uh, and it was just pouring in Soldatna. And when I came home, it was just flat pouring about probably four miles down that road. And when I got here, it was just completely dry. <laughs> I mean, as dry as it's been. So um, that's the project. That's the plan for tomorrow. I got to swing over to Todd's house and get his large ladder. Um, he's got a large, I don't know what the term of it is, um, you know, V-shaped ladder like I have there. He has some extension ladders too, but he said he's got a really tall folding ladder uh, that I'll go ahead and I'll use to get up on the top of the uh, the walls and nail off all of the top plate, get that 100% done. And then it's measuring OSB and cutting OSB. I got some extra boards too because um, a couple of viewers, like I had said in the last video, had mentioned uh, that I probably could use some extra support because we are very seismic active here in Alaska around the big windows. So I picked up four extras, uh, two buys for that. Um, and then I've got an extra two by as well to finish the, uh, the king studs that, that come up to the header on the door to extend those up above there as well. And then for whatever other little stuff I've got to do. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're doing this week. Um, I want to get this thing to the point by the end of this weekend to be able to uh, basically wrap the whole thing in Tyvek and start putting the roof on there. Uh, and I have a plan for the roof as well. Um, I'm pretty confident about that. I, I've had a couple of people tell me, uh, you know, when you get to the roof, it's going to really be tricky. But it, it seems pretty straightforward to me. So I, I watch a lot of YouTube channels as well as do the YouTube thing. And, and I watched a lot of YouTube channels to kind of learn how other people were doing it. So I could. And I've mentioned before uh, Life Off Grid with Jay and Jen. Um, and they're just, whoop, they're great people, man. They're just a hoot. They're nice, nice folks. And I like the way that Jay did it. And then when I, I, I looked at Deep, so or, uh, Deep South Homestead, uh, with Danny and Wanda. Danny kind of did the same thing too. So I'm going to do like a story pull in the middle on both sides and then I'll take that up to the height that it needs to be for the, the pitch of the roof that I'm going to have and then I'll run the ridge beam across the top of that. Uh, but those are temporary structures. Then I'll tie in the, um, the rafters on both ends and the middle. Uh, and I've actually got scaffolding for that that I'm borrowing from somebody. It's a ton, it, it's awesome how many people have loaned me stuff for this. Uh, and then I can run the rafters all the way across and they're going to be 16 inch on center. So my plan is uh, 16 inch on center with 2 by 8 rafters and a 2 by 10 ridge beam. Um, and yeah, we're just going to fly on it. I'll worry about the, the, the porch and the deck later on. Uh, I need to get that roof on so that I can get things dried in. Good morning. It's a little bit chilly today. Looks like uh, haven't started moving yet, and it's 34 degrees out. <laughs> so I, uh, I clear all my snow every year, and yes, I said the S word. Uh, I clear my snow every year with a snowblower. I've been borrowing one from uh, Kodiak Jack, and uh, one of the guys at work just bought a smaller snowblower for his driveway. So he doesn't need the massive 32-inch snow blower the air the huge air and snow blower that he got so I'm gonna go pick that up right now buying it from him uh, and then when I get back hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer it's a beautiful clear morning this morning and uh, I'll get that unloaded and covered ready to go for this winter and then I'll start working on the rest of the OSB of the top plate for the cabin get all that done today today and tomorrow uh, but yeah my own snow blower. That'll be nice. And a big one too, a 32 inch. It's supposed to throw snow pretty darn well. Uh, looking forward to getting that.
when I get back and I unload it, I'll fire up the camera and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, but uh, then we'll get busy um, finishing up the cabin. Finishing up where we're at on the cabin right now. Day two, it looks like. All right, took a little bit longer than I expected. Had some issues getting it started. Wanted to make sure it wasn't going to be an issue, so headed over to uh, pull the spark plug on it. it smelled like he had it flooded. Uh, we pulled the spark plug on it and did some dry pulls on it. And then headed over to CarQuest to see Brother Will. Had him hook me up with a new spark plug for it. So we are set. Snowblower runs awesome. A little bit wider wheelbase. Uh, so I have to I have to do a little bit different uh, loading and unloading of it. We'll figure that out when I get home. Uh, but I'll build, I think I'm gonna build some ramps. I have that one ramp I got from Art that he set up that this one might actually be strong enough to drive right up it. But it's a beast. Now I gotta go over and get some propane. Propane and propane accessories. This is the time of year where it's been cold this morning. It was 28 degrees for our night. I'll show you right here. I don't know if I got it at 29 or 28. Crystal clear blue skies here in Alaska today. But I'm running the heater a little bit more. I don't run it during the day, but when I go to bed at night, I'll run it for maybe half the night. I don't feel like waking up in the cold. Not when I don't have to. Good morning, ladies. Try the ramp. <laughs> All right, let's see if I'm gonna break my neck.
So I, uh, when I picked this up, he had it adjusted for a driveway, which means that uh, the guard over here, and I'll show you that in a second, is flush down with the top of the asphalt. I have a gravel driveway, so I don't want that to happen or it'll kick a bunch of dirt up. Let's see if we can get this thing started. Choke, about halfway. I'm not gonna find it, at least not off the beginning. Maybe I will. Okay, this is an Aaron's 1332 snowblower. Um, it's got a 32 inch feed in the front there. Uh, and it's also got berm cutters built into the side. So I can just flip those over and it'll cut off the edge of the berm, which I didn't have on the last one. Um, it's a beast. I mean, this thing is a tank. It's a 13 and a half horsepower engine. It will throw some serious snow. I haven't figured out yet how to turn the light on. <laughs> I don't know if the light goes on its own. I'll have to get with Tim on that, but I can't really tell how well it works until we get some snow. So this is the direction of the chute. This is up or down on the chute, right? So your angle that you want to shoot the snow, uh, but it's got hand warmers too. So when it's running, when I flip this up, both of these handles get toasty warm. Matter of fact, Tim says they'll cook you out. This is the drive. And this is the um, snow chute drive. So this, this engages the gear in the front. And supposedly um, using this one in conjunction with this one, this will latch into place. I don't know that I like that, but um, so you don't have to keep your hand held down on it. Uh, the only issue that I can see at all with it is the turning, uh, which Tim said um, it's a beast to turn. And it is because it's a big, big snowblower. But I'm pretty happy with the fact that A, we got it running and uh, B, I got it here at the house now. So I don't have to worry about hauling back and forth with the pickup truck every time I need to go borrow a snowblower from Brother Jack. Very, very awesome.
hurt.
Echo, Echo. <lacht> I can see the bow in the top of this and I knew that was going to be an issue because um, this wall is in two pieces and it's got to come out. I knew it did. So as I'm here myself basically I'm just trying to come up with a system that might get this back. So this is nailed here, uh, but it's not nailed here. And I got it stretched to the other, other wall. and then I'll climb up and eyeball it. Ah, dead center in the bubbles. That's beautiful. I'll grab my cell phone me here and I'll show you. I can't really show you how bad it was. I'll show you on the next wall when I do it. But I opted to tie in the ends here and then use those boards to kind of straighten everything out as I came down because there was a bit of a wave in the wall and that's just again because it's it's two pieces. And then uh, I'll cut a piece to fit there but when I was up there it could I mean you could really see that it was bowed out. Uh, here.
Beautiful, beautiful. I think I might put three more so that that's a seam close to it. All right, that's going to do it for tonight. Um, I've got the top plate on all the way around now, and it really squared and tightened everything up, or as Ward says, plumbed it. <laughs> uh, the next thing I have to do is finish putting the OSB 
Um, in the gaps, I'm going to cut the door out tomorrow. Uh, and then I'll finish the OSB all the way up to the top of the top plates. Uh, I'm doing that so that when I start the roof here next week, um, I don't have to cut OSB to fit around the rafters as they come down. I want it to be, I want the rafters and the bird's mouth to rest right over the top of the OSB. Got a lot done today. I feel pretty, uh, I feel pretty good about how today turned out. I'm going to leave the tarp off. Um, if this floor is wiped out, it's, it's wiped out. There's nothing I can do about it. But I think, I think I'm still okay. We're supposed to get a little rain tonight and some rain tomorrow morning, but I, I'm going to work in the rain no matter what. It doesn't make any difference now. We're getting, getting to crunch time, right? Uh, and then uh, I'll probably cover everything up with the tarp again after I'm done tomorrow with all the OSB stuff. I'm going to be moving that ladder around on the inside uh, to take all the measurements from the top. Either the inside or the outside, I'll figure it out. But that big ladder uh, will make it pretty easy to, to get those last pieces up there. Uh, the most challenging ones are like this one that I put over here and the one that I put over in the other corner because even though I rested them on those uh, two by sixes, um, those pieces, I still had to come up like an eighth of an inch. So that's, that was the reason why I had the nails in there. And at one point I had the uh, uh, speed square in there as well. Uh, and thanks to my cousin, uh, Greg Battaglia, who gave me a heads up on the speed square. So when I did all the skill saw work today on um, all of these pieces that had to be cut, I did it, Greg. I actually used the speed square on the board and ran the guard of the skill saw on there. And it was much easier to cut. <laughs> Learn something new every day, right? That's it for, uh, that's it for tonight. I'm going to go in and cook dinner. Bye. Uh -huh.